2021 has been quite a good year for gadgets. We've had quite a lot of great releases this year and so I thought that maybe, maybe the releases were over. However, November turns out to be like very, very stacked and in particular, in about 24 to 48 hours, we are going to be getting the official launch for both Revived Witch and Blue Archive. And so I do know that there are a lot of you that are like, well, uh, which one do I pick? And so hopefully this video will help you make a choice. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about both Blue Archive as well as Revived Witch. Me personally, I've played through both games quite extensively. For Revived Witch, I played through the beta up until pretty much the very end. And as for Blue Archive, I played on JP launch. It was quite a lot of fun. However, I only got up to mid game. And so again, the purpose of this video is like, I know a lot of people are like, well, I can't really handle another two extra gatches at the same time. Time. And so whilst I respect that they are very, very different gatches as we will see when we go into the video, I did want to try and make some comparisons. And so to kick things off, the first thing I do want to compare is like the vibe or the atmosphere. So here we are on the Blue Archive webpage. You can already see it's very, very light and fluffy and very similar to Princess Connect. Although the story can be quite serious, you can see the majority of the focus is on like cute anime girls. That's that's pretty much it. That is not to say that like the majority of gacha games is not based on cute anime girls, but just having a look at the art style and all of the colors, the atmosphere that it evokes, you can kind of tell what kind of game it's going to be. It's not going to be like, oh, okay, the main character dies and then the main character's lover dies as well. And so that combined with like the banging music and if you guys have not checked out like the promotional video, hop over to their YouTube channel and you'll see some. But yeah, the general gist of Blue Archive is it's light, it's fluffy, it's easy to digest. And so hopping over to Revived Witch, as you can see, it's there are some darker tones. And looking at the animation in the background, you'll see it is very reminiscent of Octopath Travel. And so like you can see, we're walking through a volcano, we're walking through a forest with ruins in it, we're going to be going through like an ice place later. And so it's a very much traditional RPG, you've got like adventuring out in like the fantasy world. And so that kind of leads me into the next point, which is the story itself. And so here is just some of the footage from CBT, some of my own footage. As you can see, it it just, it's really epic. It feels very much like a fantasy RPG. There isn't overly much to show you, but like my own impression of this is that I I honestly liked Revive Witch's story more just because there is more of a story, right? You are a witch, you are going around like collecting shards and restoring power to different places. On top of that, you've forgotten your memories and you've lost a lot of your power and there are moving statues like that. Like, it, it is very, very fantasy-esque. And so moving back to Blue Archive, of course, there's going to be like an element of story. However, uh, well, honestly, I didn't really know what was going on. It's very much like Princess Connect, where it's probably more about the characters. And I'm not saying that the Blue Archive story is weak. I just personally really prefer the revived witch style. And so with that, the next thing I want to talk about is production value. Kind of like the battle interface, the UI, the live 2D. Like, look at this, guys. Revive Witch, there is most certain live 2D. I'm pretty sure like every single character has it. And on top of that, there is certainly Japanese voice acting. However, the UI itself, I think there is still a lot of polishing to do, right? So if we have a look at the UI, it just sometimes looks a bit like, it just looks a bit crushed and not completely refined. In a lot of places, it's like they just translated it and then left it there, hoping that it would fit in. Unfortunately, we all know that Chinese and Japanese characters just like they take up so much less space. But with English, we start having having problems like this, right? On top of that, it just feels quite aged, although this may be the vibe that they're going for. Like just having a look at the UI, it's not exactly modern, right? So like Blue Archive, Arknights, Punishing Grey Raven, there are a lot of like very, very modern UIs. This isn't really one of them. Of course, this is kind of like based on your own aesthetic. Some people may like this kind of vibe, but me personally, I do like the more modern look. And so speaking of the modern look, back to this video over here. So shout out to Vulcan, my mate. I'm just stealing a little bit of his footage and there's nothing he can do about it. But yeah, this is what the UI looks like for Blue Archive. It's just so cohesive. It doesn't look like it's just a bunch of JPEGs that are stuck together, right? Like the color schemes, the buttons, the fonts, it just feels like a cohesive game. On top of that, guys, plenty of live 2D as you can see in the background over here. And of course, a lot of big name voice actors. So here we are in the shop, like just look at that. It just, it feels 
feels like a proper game, right? Although it probably is a bunch of JPEGs stuck together, the experience is just like, it just feels so much more premium. However, again, you may not place too much waiting on something like this. And so the next thing I want to talk about is the gameplay itself. Blue Archive, it is very, very much like Princess Connect. You kind of like team build and deploy your characters and then away they go. So you can see they took up their positions and now they are fighting. Down here, this is very similar to your Union Burst, except there is a cost associated with it. And so I would argue that there is more of an active element here. Because not only do you have to decide which characters you want to activate the skills for, there is also positioning. So I think he's going to like drop a tub of soup or something, and then he will be able to aim it at a particular spot. All right. And so he's dropping the tub of soup right now. So you can see we can place it down in a particular area. And so after the soup lands, all the characters go and get it. However, aside from that, again, it's just going from left to right, very, very reminiscent of like Princess Connect or other auto battlers. And so with that, let's have a look at revived witches combat. So here we are fighting a succubus. And on our side, we have a whole bunch of characters as well as a bunch of skills. It is very much an active time battle system. So as you can see, there is a yellow bar as well as a purple bar. And so as the yellow bar replenishes, we can use the yellow skills for each of the characters. Actually, it's very similar to the skills that we just saw from Blue Archive. However, there is like a timing element to it. So for example, we do have like a projectile shield for when the boss does fire things at us. And then we have to time it to be able to block all of the damage. And so let me just like play the footage for you. So as you can see, two, two, two yellow ones. These are all using like the yellow energy and then the purple ones are for the purple energy. And so when I click play, it's just going to be like very, very hectic. And it's just because it's teaching you like one of the mechanics, right? So I'm just going to go ahead, click play. You can see me like spamming everything, which is a lot more active than Blue Archive was, right? On the other hand, there is autoplay. There is 2x for sure. And so if you do prefer auto battling, you can do that. However, what I do want to mention is that when we are exploring stages, there is an element of like the RPG kind of gameplay, right? So as you can see up, down, left, right, we're going through like a tower. We're climbing up as far as we can. And there are some puzzles, which is pretty cool. However, what I do want to say about this is that some people will find it gimmicky like me personally I quite liked the vibe a lot but yeah this is what revive witch has going for it and so with all of the gameplay covered what exactly does the end game look like for both revive witch and blue archive let's start off with revive witch in which pvp is one of the aspects for end game it is very reminiscent of a lot of pvp systems these days you've got beginner advanced master so it's like your easy medium hard and of course if you can beat the hardest opponent then you will be getting more rewards. And so if I remember correctly, the majority of this is going to be on auto. I don't think you can actually not auto it. And so as you can see, uh that there, there are numbers everywhere. It's actually freaking crazy. But that's really it, right? You're fighting the ghost enemies, which is which is quite standard, actually. And on top of PvP, there are also like boss battles and all of that. But I do know that PvP is a burning question for a lot of people. And so there it is, guys. And so before I leave this video, shout out to Rin Tosaka for this footage. Thank you. And so with that, let's head over to the Blue Archive PvP, which is pretty much the same thing, right? You've got your own team. You're deploying it. You're fighting another team. And like there is going to be the aspect of team building. However, if I remember correctly, this must also be fought on auto. And so if I come back over to the UI for the arena, you'll see that it is very reminiscent of Princess Connect. So over here at zero out of five, that is zero out of five attempts. Yes, we do have a ranking over here, 110. And then on top of that, we also have three choices, top, medium, bottom. Of course, if we fight the hardest one, we'll get more ranks. However, what's interesting about Blue Archives PvP is that the team comp is going to become more and more shrouded as you climb higher and higher. And so as you can see, to fight the top 100, you can only see the first character as well as the supports. And so you can see that there is going to be some level of trial and error. It's going to be quite hard to one hit. Sometimes you might get lucky. And so yeah, that's Blue Archive PvP in a nutshell. And so the other type of endgame content that I do want to show you guys, shout out to Stokesia for this footage. It is your raids where you will be fighting an exceptionally hard boss. So as you can see up here, 25 health bars. 
And so if I scroll through, we were at 25 health bars, we're down to 17, we're down to nine. And so we are about to finish off the boss. So there is the expectation of being able to clear this content by yourself. This does kind of contrast like Princess Connect where we have clan battles. And in the clan battles, we work together with 29 other people to clear a bunch of bosses. And so, yeah, that's kind of what the end game is gonna look like for Blue Archive. And so there are two more things I do wanna talk about for both of these games. The first of which is the number of pre-registrations. And so as you can see from the screen, Blue Archive has hit over 1 million pre-registrations. On the other hand, Revive Witch has unfortunately only hit 150K. And the reason that I do bring this up because there is an element of like likelihood of sustainability. And so I know that sounded a little bit like unnecessarily complex. What I really meant by that is, well, which game is more likely to survive statistically speaking? And it's very obvious that between Blue Archive and Revive Witch, it's gonna be Blue Archive. However, that is not to say that Blue Archive is 100% gonna succeed as we saw from the very recent release of Tales of Luminaria. And I'm not gonna go into it too deeply, but Tales is a massive, massive IP and it, it got crushed. Let me put it that way. There was quite significant hype around it and it ended up flopping really, really hard. And then on the flip side, 150K, if I remember correctly, Arknights actually only had 150K pre-registrations as well. And then as we know it today, Arknights is one of the mainstream most popular gatches. And so therefore the pre-registrations don't tell like the whole story. It's just that they are like sort of an indicator. However, that is going to take me to my last point, which is these guys down here. Publishers and developers. So for Blue Archive, that's Nexon and Nat Games. If I remember correctly, Nat Games is a subsidiary of Nexon. And so they are kind of interrelated. And Nexon traditionally does have a pretty bad reputation. However, I do want to say, give them a chance guys. So if I click into the YouTube button up there, I will end up on their YouTube channel and as you can see there are a whole bunch of updates from like the developers from the writers from the VAs and the team does look like they are committed to bringing a lot of like the QOLs that already exist in the JP server over to global on day one especially in this video over here it really does sound like they are committed to bringing a good game on top of that Nexon KR is also doing Konosuba and so that's just this one over here Konosuba fantastic days and I definitely played this game for a while it was quite quite good and I don't think they really did anything wrong. I reckon they were doing quite a good job with Konosuba. I personally actually didn't have any problems with it. It's just that I was juggling too many games at the time and even now. And so all of this is culminating to give Nexon a chance, guys. And so with that being said, let's move on to the revived witch publishers and developers. So that is gonna be Pixel Neko as well as Yostar. Let me find it. And so as you can see down here, Pixel Neko, the developers and Yostar, which are the publishers. Yostar certainly has a positive reputation Reputation. They publish Arknights, they publish Azura Lane. And the impression of your staff from the majority of people who do pay attention to publishers is that they bring a game virtually one to one from the source material. And so generally that's a good thing because it means that we probably won't get shafted. Hopefully they won't nerf this or they won't censor that, etc. On top of that, the developers are also actually communicating quite a fair bit. So I can't remember if it's this post over here. Yep, so it is this one because I see it's the pay wall as well as the doll Selenia. So paraphrasing all of this, there was a paid doll. So dolls are the units in the game. There are a few dolls, I believe in like the CN version where you could only get them via the battle pass. And so I think what Pixel Neko has committed to is they're gonna not release this kind of system, the pay all system, like you gotta pay to get a certain character. Well, of course, generally you do have to pay, especially because it's a gacha game. But I think there were just some points in the game where the paywall was, it was quite steep, right? And so again, I think they are committed to making it a more free to play experience, which is quite nice to see. Open communication is always great. So for both Blue Archive and Revived Witch, like ticks in the boxes for me. And so with that, I think that's pretty much like all of the different topics I wanted to cover. And so if you were to ask me, well, am I gonna be playing Revived Witch or am I gonna be playing Blue Archive? That is honestly like seriously a really tough question because I do like both games. Me personally, I was gonna play both and like I probably will end up like trying out both anyway. I just personally think that both Blue Archive and Revived Witch, they are very, very strong releases. They both fill very, very distinct niches. As you can see, Blue Archive, very fluffy, very nice, casual, like waifu collector. And then on the other hand, we've got Revived Witch. We've got the gorgeous pixel art. We've got like the RPG elements. And so honestly, a massive TLDR for all this entire video, I think that they are both worth trying. 
Again, although they are both launching on the same day, I will probably try to re-roll for both because I'm a freaking madman. It's just how I am. I find a lot of fun in re-rolling. Revive Witch, it's going to be an easy re-roll. There's like a, I think a 99 re-roll kind of uh, system. Blue Archive is going to be significantly harder to re-roll for, which, which is tough. But yeah, me personally, I am going to try both. <laughs> Ah, uh, here we go again. And so really, that's enough about what I think. And so I want to pass this off to you and see what you guys think about Blue Archive and Revived Witch. Considering that they're both launching on pretty much the same day, are you willing to give both a shot? Or does one of them appeal to you more than the other? And so if you could drop your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. But otherwise, my guys, we are at the end. Please consider a like if you did like this video. If if you haven't subscribed already, you already know what to do. And if you would like to support the channel, we have some affiliate links and a membership thing. But otherwise, I hope this video was helpful. At the very least, I hope it's hyped you up for both games. But as a witch that keeps reincarnating once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.